Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 where I'm going to take a look at the recently released Beechcraft Staggerwing that is available on the marketplace for $15. I believe it was made by Carinado and it looks spiffy. It has already been reviewed by many people and it looks good and has gotten good reviews. So uh, you'll probably already know whether you want it or not, but I'll give it a go anyway. Uh, you can see here a uh, selection of liveries. Uh, there are nine of them. That are main liveries, well, eight main liveries, one plain white, and then two that are the Aviator Club liveries. Uh, so, yep, I'll just go with the red one this time. And I'll top it off with fuel here. And you can see it's max takeoff weight there. And we will see how it goes. There are complications though. It doesn't come with a manual. You could probably find manu a manual online or the equivalent information uh, because it was a reasonably popular plane. But, and actually on the flight sim forums, I believe they posted some information for the performance. And also, most importantly, the fuel selector. The fuel selector is a little bit complicated. So once we get into the cockpit, I'll talk about that. Uh, but there are other complications. First of all, I don't believe flight sim actually does biplanes as such. Uh, it, it only allows you to have one main wing. So... Uh, if you're looking for realistic biplaneness, that's probably more an X-Plane 11 thing. X-Plane 11 is still better on the aerodynamics in general. Uh, obviously, the scenery is much better here, but if you want the high fidelity aerodynamics, that's still an X-Plane thing. So keep that in mind, but otherwise, there'll be a lot of other things that are spiffy in here. I'm flying from Marrakesh to Casablanca. It is a decent length flight. This is not my first flight in the plane. That's how I discovered the fuel selector thing. <laughs> um, uh, my first flight in the plane, I actually tried to fly from Goose Bay over to uh, that place I can't pronounce in Greenland. Uh, uh, right there. That you. Uh, Narsarswak. Narsarswak? Anyway, uh, that actually is the limit of the Beechcraft Staggerwings range. I couldn't make it. But I mainly couldn't make it because I didn't realize about the fuel selector and how it worked properly. Uh, so I wasn't able to select the correct tank in time. And therefore, um, it's hard to descend. I was still trying to flick the fuel tank selector. But because I was descending at the same time, it overstressed the aircraft and uh, disintegrated. So, yep, that didn't work out very well. But that's sort of the critical leg for uh, around the world flight, assuming you can get across the Bering Sea from Kamchatka to the Aleutian Islands, which these days isn't exactly something you can do. But anyway, we'll try this flight instead, and this should be well within range, maybe. Uh, let's find out. Okay, so this is our interior. And I'm glad that they have a classic interior instead of the, a modern interior. Uh, these struts here that are right in the way are real. That's how it is. Uh, as is the fact that the mix mixture control is behind the steering column. Not a problem for me because I have it on an axis. Uh, so yeah, I have a separate control for that. And that is working. And uh, prop is working. Uh, so that's all right. And here are the fuel selectors. There's no little pad in this. So the way the fuel selector works is this lower valve thing. Uh, I've uh, zoomed in as much as possible. I'm not uh, selecting my cursor, so that's sad. But anyway, if you s turn this fuel selector main down to where it says lower valve there, it'll activate this valve. And you can see how many gallons there are. The main tank has 29. And then on the opposite side, uh, the problem is when I try and select it, uh, oh, it interrupted the engine very briefly. I don't know if it should be that quick, but anyway. Uh, and then there's the LU tank, and then there's an RU tank, LL tank. And so. Uh, probably what you want to do is, before toggling this one, toggle that one, so that uh, when you go through the lower valve option, it's still running. Oh! <laughs> it is awkward. Anyway, I'm trying to use the mouse wheel. I should probably have it on a separate control. So now we would be on the RU tank, and it goes like that. But yeah, so there's five tanks. And unfortunately, uh, they don't have a tank by tank 
indicator. You do have this other digital fuel indicator that uh, is not obviously a leg uh, legacy thing, but at least we can see how much fuel remaining and fuel used. So right now used uh, 0, 0.0 amazingly enough. Uh, so since we're on a lower valve, by the time we get to 23, I should switch it. So anyway, there we go. That's how it'll have to be for now. And outside. So there's this livery. They have little rivets all over the place. It's about as good as you can expect it to be. Very sleek for the time. It was it originally flew in 1932. So exceptionally sleek plane considering when it was made. The only real competition for it, uh, I like the Hughes H1 myself. That is a wonderful plane. I hope somebody makes it a very difficult plane to fly. So, yep. And in the back here, we've got nice wood paneling on the side and the seats there. Everything is done pretty well. Uh, I think the window does roll down. Uh, 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 okay, okay. It seems like it's just down or up. Alright, so all of that being said, um, it looks like my GPS isn't reading there because it's just pointing north. That's a little bit annoying. I'll have to use the map if it ever shows up. There we go. Okay, the map has the course. It is sort of north anyway. Okay. Releasing brakes, and here we go. Gently, because it is a tail dragger. It tends to the left. Now, of course, as the fuel gets imbalanced, it'll tend to one side as well. Okay, off we go. It does have retractable landing gear, another innovation of its day. So, uh, maybe we'll hear the sound inside, I take it back. This is how it sounds. Fairly quiet. Uh, actually, I had some sites I wanted to see here. Since I got the an Africa scenery pack off of flightsim.to, uh, there's a Minara. Ooh, okay, I don't think I can make that turn. We'll see outside. Ooh. Oh, it's that pool there. Oh, uh, maybe it's sort of a templing thing. Uh, yeah, well, whatever it is, that is that. That little building there at the... Uh, Front end of that pool. Okay, didn't quite catch that one. But as you can see, that this Africa scenery pack, which is available for free on flightsim.to, has a lot of points of interest in Africa, and it's fairly lightweight. So I was wondering what the quality would be, considering that. So we'll do a circuit over here. I'll keep the map up, even though it's a uh, nuisance. Uh, so that we can see what the sites are supposed to be. Uh, stuff sometimes they blend in, but I think this this building in front of us must be some sort of temple thing. Some of them are just uh, bigger buildings. Maybe this one is custom, I think. We'll take another circuit of the city without that. That's a custom wall right there, that orange wall. There's no way that's by default. So just a little... Uh, little bonuses to the view. I 
It's fairly fast plane, the Sager Wing, considering it is a biplane. It's got a 450 horsepower engine. About the same as Lockheed Vega. But the Vega carried more more fuel and such, especially on the long-range flights that people did with it. Okay, so Marrakesh train station, that's this building right here. So, because the mod is lightweight, the Africa Scenery mod, obviously the buildings aren't like super, super detailed, but it's good enough, I think. So, let's just enjoy Marrakesh a little bit here. Uh, fairly well done, overall. I mean, uh, looking like a decent city, really. Despite the autogen. The smattering of uh, unique buildings does help. Okay. Well, uh, we'll just sort of ball along this wall here. <laughs> um, that should be basically the right direction for Casablanca. So, off we go. There's no autopilot in this plane. And th that affects me not at all since I almost never fly with autopilot. I'm glad they have the sort of classic interior, with the exception of the fuel flow indicator. I'll take the propeller RPM down a bit. Only a little bit to 2,200. Uh, maybe we'll go to 2,000. I think the manuals they posted said cruise was 2,000. I don't mind that too much. Climb should be higher. Uh, note the manifold pressure red line there is actually a minimum, I think. It should be more like 30, 33-ish normally. Uh, it peaks above, uh, it peaks at 37, probably 35, 33, there's a little dash there, and that's probably the sweet spot. And we get pretty good performance, you see, just cruising right along at low altitude. If we want to go to high altitude, it can get pretty high, though there's no uh, pressurization system as far as I can tell. Performance-wise, it can get very high. Basically, you can get as high as you uh, can push it until it gets to that critical manifold pressure. So, uh, back view of Marrakesh. Oh, we're already a bit far from it. You can see it in the haze there. Lots of haze out here in the desert. Oh, the cars are driving on something that's supposed to be a roadway there, but it's barely delineated. Uh, not delineated at all, really. I think there's a missing road there. Huh. Places like this, the whole world photo scenery really helps break the monotony, if you will. That is, uh, again, one downside of uh, X-Plane 11. Uh, flying in these locations, the stock scenery isn't great. And even if you use for, uh, Ortho 4 XP to get photo scenery, it isn't wonderful, so... So, let's take a look at the lights. Nav lights, dome light, there's a panel light as well. Can't really tell right now, but... We'll just keep it. Nav lights, let's see. Okay. And really, the front textures. All the textures are really nice. And we gotta put it into more of a climb. We've got a long way to Casablanca after all. But well, now we have a roadway underneath. Uh, that probably is a roadway we can follow. I mean, I don't know what else that roadway can be going to except for Casablanca, so. <laughs> You know, must be going where we're going. It seems like the used isn't really indicating properly. At least when I'm on this lower valve. You can see the used is still at zero. I thought that was suspicious to begin with. 
We would have to track by the remaining. At least, hopefully that's changing. Yeah, that's changing. Um, I don't remember what the top amount was. I mean, the full amount was. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. We've deviated a lot. Again, now it has the leftward tendency. And there's no, like, rudder or aileron trim on this. So, just have to correct for that. It says 2 hours and 17 minutes remaining. I'm just adjusting the mixture based on the fuel flow, actually. Yeah. Still up. I mean, I guess we could drain the tanks in such a way that it would go the opposite direction. Let me try selecting the right U, RU tank. I don't know if that's the right way around or not. So I selected RU at 112 gallons remaining. That means that we should switch to something else at 89. Let's see how good... Uh, we should try and make sure we're keeping an eye on that roadway from the cockpit. Do some real VFR flying here. So, steady at 8,000 feet. Well, going down a little bit. Mostly steady at 8,000 feet here. I've got the prop at 2,000 RPM. Mixture's a little bit down. And the throttle is so that the manifold pressure is at 33. And we're going pretty briskly. That started going up again. Nice side view as it's cruising along. Just keeping an eye on the road there. got two roads to follow now so if just minor variations the plane has been very stable hanging out at 8,000 feet here so the trimming is fine uh, the only problem is the fact that it tends to go to the left constantly so yeah that will be annoying without the autopilot Okay, I think I might have picked the wrong tank to try and drain. Because, uh, I don't know, our leftward tendency is even worse, I think. We're still about 10 gallons away from where I need to switch tanks. We might not even need to switch tanks before we get to Casablanca, judging from the map. And yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna switch tanks early because it's getting worse and worse as far as the leftward tendency is concerned. Now, does that make sense? I mean, when you think about it, the center of mass tends towards. I mean, if the center of mass is further to the right, then we would tend further to the left, right? Yeah, so it would make sense to drain the right tank first so that the center of mass, mass moves to the left and that the center of thrust is off to the right and therefore we would tend to the right. I don't know. It's complicated because most of this is just the torque. Okay, I think I'll begin descending. The main airport is this GMMN. I've decided to target a grass field that's closer to the center of town. Oh, we need to slow down. Don't want to overstress it again. I guess the red line, I don't know what the red line for the manifold pressure is, because once we throttle down, we're below it. Maybe I should keep it to that. I don't know if there is sort of any, any engine failure modeling on this at all, so... She doesn't need much of its pitch trim range. I think maybe a finer amount of pitch trim would be good, because I haven't seen it past 3%. <laughs> um, yeah, I think its pitch trim is too wide a range. 
if they could have a narrow ra narrower range, it'd be easier to do a finer adjustment, and I think that might be necessary. I'm using the hat switch on the joystick to do the pitch, so basically it's one click at a time. I guess we'll divert a little bit to see the main airport and just fly over that briefly. Okay, so this is the main airport for Casablanca. There isn't going to be any special buildings here right now. They have some semblance of a terminal at least. Oh, we've got a decent roadway again here. The photo scenery textures are occasionally lacking, like that patch over to the left there. I mean, well, it all depends on when they capture the aerial photos of the location. And considering it seems very cloudy today, whether they can avoid the clouds. Oh, well, we already see some, well, at least one big building there. Well, there's a Casablanca Techno Park up ahead. Okay, so we can see that Techno Park there again. That was added by the Africa Scenery Pack, the freeware one from FlightSim.to. Well, that's an interesting looking building for sure. Let's see what the next thing is. We're taking a loop around. There's a train station. I mean, it's looking Casablanca-ish. I mean, I don't know if they do all their buildings in some form of beige, but... Expecting a train station, clock tower. You know what? We'll just dump the map and we'll just take a look around. If we can't see it, it's a failure. No, um clearly not striking enough. Then again, some of it might be low-lying. I don't know. Uh, I might be missing it, though. I see a building over there. That is a Cathedral Sacre Coeur. And then... There's a Twin Center somewhere. Uh, there's a big building here, that's unique. That's the Twin Center, okay. And then there's a stadium, Med B Stadium. And then we'll go along the coast. Uh, this one could do some work, unfortunately. Yeah. Nice try, but yeah, not the best adaptation of the programmetry. I think uh, trying to make sure that the full pack is not too hefty, but that might have been going a little bit too far there. So Fare El Hank is probably that lighthouse. That's fairly plain, but lighthouses, I really don't need to be too detailed. Just need to be there. I guess this is the Hassan II Mosque up front. Got palm trees out front too. Where's this clock tower? Side wing has a nice bit of heft to it. Doesn't give me the feeling of something that would do be able to turn on a dime, that's for sure. I don't see the clock tower. 
Okay, and then a train station. Oh, okay, I think I see where the lines are. Okay, uh, it's this building here. Okay, it's got a little sign there too. Anyway, we've seen most of the things. Obviously, more unique buildings than Casablanca had before. So, overall, it's a nice flight. And we will now land at the location indicated which I was expecting to be a 3,000 foot grass field as GMMC there so another look at Casablanca the less built up area here a lot of it seems fairly dense Lots of high rises and such. Uh, well, I couldn't see it. Uh, <laughs> let's see, left. Is there a airport here? Yes. I guess this field over here must be it. Sure don't have a lot going on here. Well, if it says there's an airport, oh, it's got a roundabout there. I don't know what part of this. Maybe I should just land at the international airport. I'm not too sure about this grass field. I don't get the feeling I'm gonna get any fuel there. Let's let's go over to the international airport. Shoot. Okay. Uh, back into the cockpit. And I should have done more flying inside the cockpit at Casablanca, but oh well. We'll certainly be landing in it. Look at the paneling. Okay, so after an hour and 15 minute flight, I am approaching the airport here. Gear down. Uh, I actually don't know what the landing gear speed is. Oops. I did want to see the animation, so let's see. Uh, slow down. We'll have an interesting... Oh, it's going down now. We won't have an ideal approach, but... Okay. Flaps. It does have flaps. Coming in like the space shuttle now. Okay, uh, it still hopped. That was gentle. Uh, I guess that was too fast, though. I hate tail draggers. Especially at this point. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just stop, 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 stop. Okay, okay, okay. It's alright, I was still on the runway, I swear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, it's got a steerable tail wheel, too. Very fancy. Like I said, business jet of its day. Okay, well, we barely got that. That was my first landing with it. Remember, my first flight with it, I did not survive, so, because of the fuel situation. I don't know if I can make this turn. Oh, uh, yeah, we can make this turn without tipping over, so. Uh, ground handling is easy. That was obviously not a turn we're supposed to make. This is not the taxi way we're supposed to take. But anyway, with that, that has been my check out of the Beechcraft Staggerwing from Marrakesh to Casablanca. And it is a nifty little plane. And maybe I'll try again for the flight from uh, Goose Bay over to Greenland. Anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.